In this tutorial, we'll learn how to create some realistic rocks in Blender, like what you see here, and how to scatter them over any surface or any landscape. This is not just for rocks, you can apply this same technique to scatter any object on any given area. So this is basically a tutorial on how to scatter objects on any surface. And we'll do this by using a powerful geometry node setup. Let us start with a blank new file. We'll delete this default cube, and instead we'll first create some rocks over here. But we want these rocks to be created under a separate collection. So right-click on the outliner, and select New Collection. Let us rename this collection to Rocks. It is important that this new collection is selected, so that the rocks get created under this. Now go to the Add menu, and under Mesh, we'll use an operator which is called Rock Generator. But if you are unable to see this option in your setup, you have to go to the Edit menu, and then Preferences. Now switch over to this Add-ons tab. And here, you have to type, Extra. You'll get these add-ons listed here. You have to ensure that this add-on called, Add Mesh Extra Objects, is enabled through this checkbox. Now close this window, and Rock Generator will come under the Add Mesh menu. Let us click on this, and Blender will create a rock, like this one. Now open this operator box. You'll get various options here, to customize the shape, and look and feel of the rocks. We'll go with the default options for this tutorial, but let us change the number of rocks, maybe to 100. Blender will take some time, and then you'll see that these rocks are created, under the collection that we named as rocks. We can now close this box. You must have noticed that the rocks are created at the same location. So they are right now overlapping with each other. But that's not a problem, we'll scatter them over some area like this. So we need to add a plane, but we want to add this plane outside this rocks collection. We can rather select this collection. Let us then add a plane into our scene. We have to enlarge this plane, maybe by a factor of 10. We'll create rock instances on this plane, so we need to first ensure that there are enough number of subdivisions for this. So go to the Modifiers tab, and add a Subdivision Surface Modifier. Switch over to this simple tab. Let us increase the subdivision levels to 4, in both the places, and apply the modifier. In the wireframe view mode, you can verify that the subdivisions are actually present. Remember, this is very important for the next step. We'll do the rest of the process through geometry nodes. So open another editor and switch over to this geometry nodes. Press in to hide this side panel and click on new. So we'll get these two default nodes added here. One is group input and another is group output. Now go to the add menu. Then under Mesh, we have to add a Mesh to Points node, and place over here. As a result, you'll see that our plane, is now converted into some points like this, and we'll create one instance of the rocks, at each of these points here. So go to the Add menu, and under Instances, add one instance on Points node, and place it after this. We have to connect our rock objects to this instance socket, in order to create instances from the rocks collection, for each of the points. So again go to the Add menu, and under Input, add a Collection Info node, and place somewhere here. We are going a little faster with this, because we have covered these topics in two other tutorials. In this first tutorial, we have discussed the basics of geometry nodes in Blender. And in this one, we have discussed two different techniques to create instances, using geometry nodes. The links are given in the video description, so you can watch them, if you are new to this. In the Collection Info node, in this Collection field, please select the Rocks Collection. We have to also enable this separate Children option, so that Blender uses the individual contents that are present under this collection, instead of the collection itself as a whole. Now connect this Geometry Output to the Instance field of this node. You have to also enable this option called Pick Instance. As a result, Blender will pick up one object from this Rocks Collection, and place it on each of the points here, but they are too big in size, so switch over to this relative option. Now the instances will look perfect. We have got one rock at each of the points, and they all have different shapes. You can hide this original rock collection because it is no longer needed. Next, we'll bring the scattering effect for these rocks. They are created at each point, but if we can create them at some random points, it will look like scattering. 
We can do that by attaching a random value to this selection input. So go to the Add menu. Then under Utilities, add a random value node, and place it somewhere here. Change this to Boolean type. Then connect its value output to this selection input in order to create some random points. And you'll see that the rock instances are created at random, not on all points like before. You can easily control the number of these rocks by changing this field downward or upward. Let's go with the default value which is 0.5. So this way, you can create instances of any object and scatter them over some area. Here we have used rocks, but you can use any other object, or a group of objects as well. And you might have noticed that some rocks have an uneven surface. Let us make them smoother by adding one subdivision. So go to the Add menu, and under Mesh, add a subdivision surface node, and place it after the instancing node. That will create a better geometry for the rocks. Next, we can also rotate these rocks at some random angles, for a realistic output. To do that, we have to add a rotation node here. Let us go to the Add menu. Then under Instances, add a Rotate Instances node, and place just after the subdivision node. Now, we have to add a random angle to the rotation input of this node. So again go to the Add menu, and this time from the Utilities, add a random value node, and place it somewhere here. But this rotation input has got three such components, for each of the three axes, and we cannot enter these values separately, so we have to use a vector input for this field. Let us move these nodes to the right and create some room here. Now go to the Add menu once again, and then from the vector group, add a Combine XYZ node, and place it over here. Since we are dealing with the rotation angles, the minimum value can be 0, and let us change the maximum to 360. Now connect this value to the X input. We can minimize this. You have to then make two duplicate copies of this node, and connect them one by one to the Y and Z input. Finally, connect its vector output to this rotation angle. Now the rocks will get a random rotation, and each rock will have a unique orientation. This looks very realistic, and it will be helpful in many different scenarios. You may also want to change their size randomly, instead of having a uniform size for all. Some rocks will have a smaller size, and some may be big. We have to add one more node for that. So go to the Add menu, and under Instances, add a Scale Instances node, and place it at the end. We need a random value, so copy this random value node, and bring that here. Then expand it. We'll set the minimum value, maybe as 0.5, and this maximum value as 2. Now connect this value to this scale input. And we're done with this. So, we'll get different types of rocks in various different sizes. As you can see, some of them are small and some are big in size. And their scattered distribution looks good, but we also need a landscape or a background for our rocks. So go to the Add menu and add a plane. We'll enlarge this and it should be little bigger than the original plane. Let us go with a factor of 12 here. Things are now looking far better. Let us also go underneath and verify. Here you'll discover that the lower half of each rock is completely under the ground plane. This is actually good and realistic as well, because in reality, rocks do get buried under the ground. Or you can also move it down by a small amount. Let's say we bring it down by 0.5 unit. Now it looks almost perfect. Our modeling part is done. Next would be the materials. We have to add a suitable texture for the rocks and also for this background. And it will look even better if we can deform this plane to create an uneven terrain for the ground part. This is the shader setup we used for the rock material. You can take note of it. You'll notice that we have used four image files for the texture and other nodes. These textures are available for free in the website given below, you can use them as well. Once the materials are set up, we'll get a result like this. So in this tutorial, we learned how to scatter a group of objects using geometry nodes, and how to randomize their size and their location. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.